Hey, Sharks fans. Thanks for tuning in to another podcast from TealTownUSA.com. In this episode, we speak with former San Jose Sharks and Barracuda goalie Troy Grosnick about his time in San Jose, playing for his hometown Milwaukee Admirals as part of the Nashville Predators organization, and fun with sports logos. I am Eric Kura alongside AJ Strong, and joining us still weird to say uh property of the nashville predators uh goaltender troy grossnick how are you good sir i'm good thanks for having me guys thank you for joining us it's it's a kind of a funny story on how how we got this whole thing set up um we were talking about um sports logos mainly uh, the the sudden revelation of of the you and i kind of go back a little bit as members of the uh Chris Creamer, uh, sportslogos.net community. Yeah, I uh, it's something I always obviously being a sports fan and um, it's something for whatever reason that when I was a little kid I always drew up uh, logos and jerseys and my brother and I you know we got a kick out of doing that and then we'd go down to the basement and whether it was a baseball league that we just drew up or a hockey league that we just drew up we'd start playing games as these teams and then. Um, as the internet started to progress a little bit, I tried to do some stuff online and then I ended up finding, uh, yeah, the, the sports logos, uh, site, Chris Creamer sports logo site there. And, uh, mm. was pretty active in it for a while. It was actually kind of funny cause I, we, we had a little trouble doing the technology here to get all together, but, um, it was actually one of the reasons that I, I stopped, uh, really doing anything with the site was cause I was playing in junior hockey my laptop bummed out and I had no more access. So I kind of went, uh, went missing there, but it is something, you know, it's, uh, something that I always found cool. And, um, it's, uh, it's funny too, uh, with the sports logos things when I was at union, Josh Juris and I would always, uh, we actually talked about how we both used to do that same thing. He, uh, he would drop logos when he was a little kid. So, we had a lot of time off for Christmas break that we were actually still playing hockey and we'd go on to NHL, you know, whatever the latest NHL was like NHL 13 or whatever. And we'd start just designing jerseys and we'd sim yes. years, years and years of, of games with our, uh, our creative team. So it was, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Are there, is there a yeah. way like whether it's, uh, I don't know, PlayStation or, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I know there's some you can play some of the NHL games on a PC, um, Xbox. If you like make your own specific logo, is there a way you can like load that in and play with that crest? Because if there isn't, there should be. Yeah, I don't know if there is. I mean, when we were doing that online, we uh, or with the NHL, we would just build off whatever logos they had and kind of create our colors. And you know, we kind of had to go through their parameters, but. You're absolutely right. Like, uh, you know, some of the logos I drew, I was way better at, at drawing them by hand and never really had the technology to, you know, create anything super cool other than, you know, taking my time in Microsoft Paint back in the day and, and trying <laughs> yes. to write stuff up. But, um, yeah, I, I was always one of those guys that I just kind of did them by hand. And, uh, you know, it's it's super cool. But like that uh, Chris Kramer sports logos community, all the concepts that guys do, it's um, it's it's amazing um, some of the abilities that people have. But I would love to be able to, you know, do something like that. And like you said, put it into an NHL game. It would be super cool. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I, I, uh, when did you figure out that the – Brewer's glove was in fact a made of from an M and a B. Uh, I knew well just growing up in Milwaukee, I I think it was almost something that I was like brought up in. Like um like my dad would call it the M B glove logo. So I don't remember a time it not being an M and a B, to be honest. So it's kind of funny to me when people just see Oh, I just, I'm just seeing that or <laughs> Um, now, now being in Milwaukee, we actually got to go to a couple Brewers games um, with the team, and um, guys like saying something like, "I like the logo, like the glove. It's kind of cool." And I was like, "Well, you know, it's like an M and a B too." And they're like, "No way!" And I was like, <laughs> yeah, "Yeah." Awesome. Well, I, I'm actually ironic that you were talking to you because 
you wore one of my concepts. I'm actually wearing it. it the the what, Barracuda jersey from last year. Um, so that that was a total kick out of it, and and it's it's just shocking and awe when you see your own your own stuff come from pen and pencil or in this case photoshop to real life and and thank goodness you beat grand rapids that day because that would have been awesome that would have been rough on me they said yeah no, I had... it's a cool jersey it's one of those things um i'm glad i'm i feel like i'm i don't know if I, i'm in the minority or not but playing in the minor league some of the jerseys that you have to wear it's kind of like are we seriously <laughs> wearing this today and uh, <laughs> So it was one of the one of the pleasant surprises to be able to wear that jersey as a specialty jersey, the one that was you know obviously well concepted and conceptualized and uh, looked good on the ice. So um, yeah, it was definitely a, a bonus seeing that be the jersey that we were wearing that day instead of uh, we were wearing some crazy ones like the dog ones and I yes. think they have their lifeguard ones this year. Ugh. You know the. Christmas sweater ones like it's just like all right like do we have to wear these ones today <laughs> you know whatever uh whatever makes them happy uh you know we'll do it but uh it's kind of funny like it was it was definitely one of the best uh alternate jerseys I wore uh nice. in the minor leagues thank you thank you um in regarding to like goaltender masks kind of transition over to that uh do you do you, are you thinking of what you want in particular, or is it in a certain way you go go about it with your mask and such? Yeah, I don't know. I I mean, I feel like once I find something I like, I tend to stick with it. That's why my sharks mask really haven't changed at all. Um, my union mask didn't really change at all. Um, I've been wearing a white mask with the with the admirals and the predators just because of time constraints on, on painting, but um, I already have my uh, concept on for my mask. Um, and I've just kind of, I, I trust, I've been working with the same guy, Todd Miska. He's based out of here in Minnesota. Um, I've been working with him ever since junior. So um, we have a pretty good understanding of, of what I like. And so I kind of give him the basic uh, idea and I let him take the, uh, artistic side of it and see what what is probably going to work the best out of the broad idea that i have so kind of trust the artist on that point and he's never done me wrong so <laughs> who, who uh awesome. who, whose mask right now do you think uh, is the best in the nhl who's the one you look at and you uh, go okay that was a great idea i don't know i don't know about now like i guess i i mean i watch a lot of hockey but i i don't know if i necessarily pay attention to masks as much as i did when i was like a little kid um but i remember i always loved the patrick laleen mask with the M marvin the martian when he was in oh, ottawa i yes. just thought it was a great idea a great concept um so i always loved those masks um i think um uh, i mean i love i i really like jonesy's mask with the with the uh tie in the chin um i think that's kind of a cool um idea um you know i like i think I'm trying to think who else i really like um i've tended to start to like kind of like the simpler ideas and i feel like um a lot of them have gotten to the like a crazy level now with um i will say the crazy level i did like um, that first like glow in the dark mask that Bishop did with the lightning, it, I thought it was clean and mm. simple, but then still had that little flare where it lit up in the dark. So, those are some of the masks that I can think of that I really thought those are sharp. Yeah, I remember a few times looking at Eddie Belfour's going, "Man, that is way too busy." <laughs> yeah, well, I so actually it's funny, and we we're talking about hidden things in masks or, or logos. Eddie Belfour, the eagle, it says eagle in it. I don't know if you guys ever realized it or anything. That I didn't remember. But so Eddie Belfour, some of the later, I'm, I don't know, definitely by the time he was in Dallas, he was doing it. But if you look at where the, the head and 
kind of body of the eagle would come together, it says eagle and just kind of hidden in the plume. Oh, wow. So I just I just pulled cool. up a picture cool. of it. And actually, um, he worked with actually the same guy that uh, I work with. He worked with Tom Miska, too. Very cool. Yeah. I did not know that. I'm just looking at that right now. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> those, those little synchrosynes is what we get a kick out of. Yeah. Out of it all, for sure. Well, it's like, uh, uh, you know, looking at the when they revamped the shark's logo and you could see in you know, if you, it's, it's hard to explain, especially if you're listening to this audio wise, but um, just that you can make out an S and a J in the body of the shark. Right. You know, it's though those little things, even the, uh, that new uh, secondary logo, it has like an S and a J underneath the, you know, the body and the, the neck of it so uh, right. that's those graphic guys it's it's so funny the the little subliminal things that you know like you were saying with the milwaukee brewers some people they it just goes right over their heads and there's other guys that go oh my god what a simple yet fantastic idea yeah exactly i think that's one of the things that i when it's when you can tell it's not you know it was thought of but it wasn't you know you didn't have to go over the top to make it fit in it just kind of fits perfectly i think those are the types of like um actually another one of my favorites is actually the the capital shoulder patch with the eagle but the capital building coming up in between i think that's i think it's just a beautiful idea and a beautiful execution yeah absolutely so uh um, do you, should we moved away from logos and on to uh to uh your time with the sharks and I don't know who who was like more annoying, Staylock, Dell. I mean, okay, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I love both those guys. Um, kept in touch a little bit with both of them. Um, Al's obviously here. Uh, he's on the other side of the cities. Um, he's on the other side of St. Paul. He's east side. I live west side, uh, west side of Minneapolis. So um, we still run into each other at least a couple times a summer. Um, talk to Deller once in a while. Uh, both great guys and. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's one thing that I loved about the Sharks organization was uh, they do a great job of bringing in good character guys. Um, can't even think of you know a time that we really had any issues in the locker room, even down with the Barracuda. It's just uh, a lot of good guys, and um, yeah, I think when you surround yourself with good people, good things happen. So um, you know, it's it's definitely time that I look back on and I cherish and. Um, you know, I wouldn't have traded those four and a half years for anything. Well, I, I mean, I would say that you had one of the one of the more notable debuts as a shark. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's <laughs> special. Um, it was one of those kind of, you know, just for whatever reason, everything was working that day. Was, got a little lucky, got a little good, and um, yeah, it's something that uh, I'll never forget. And um, you know, it's definitely something that uh, just being able to share that with my parents and, and and my now wife, my brother, just my family. Um, it was definitely very, very cool. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we weren't able to carry it over to Buffalo the next, uh, the next game. But um, that's the way it goes. And, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, it's kind of been my motivation to get back to, to that level. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, that happens. Now, I mean, Eric, Definitely. Eric, correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't Grossnick's de- NHL uh, debut shutout the first for the Sharks since Nabby at the Pepsi Center? I believe so. Oh. I believe so. In oh. in 45 saves against Carolina. I mean, 45 saves in any game, it was just, it is great. But to have that as your debut, that's so cool. And I was so jacked up for you when that, when that occurred. Um, but yeah, you've you've moved on to uh, the national organization and playing in Milwaukee since it's it's pretty close to your hometown. What's it like playing so close to where you grew up? It's been another thing that was really cool. Um, actually, it's kind of funny when I did get traded. Um, Joe Joe Will kind of called me over the side and said, "Hey, we got to I got to talk to you." And it was kind of weird as 
uh, one of the first right around the trade deadlines that I was like, I'm, I'm pretty set and I'm relatively safe, I thought. And, uh, you know, I guess that's kind of when um, things happened, but it, it definitely blindsided me. And even when he said, we got I need to talk to you, I didn't think anything of it. I thought we were just going to talk about something or other. I don't even know, but Joe's Joe's always around the locker room, so it's not that weird for him to want to speak to you. And uh, but then when we went up to the office, I knew something was going on. And uh, there's when they first told me like traded, like it it was emotional. And then they told me to Nashville and to Milwaukee. Um, you know, it was it definitely softened that blow. Um, just being able to be close to family and um, it got it got to Milwaukee. Everyone was great. It's. Uh, it was definitely when I stepped in the locker room the first time. Is is a little bit of uh, you know it was emotional too, just because all the teams that I grew up watching, they're all all the pictures are on the wall. So it's just like I I remember that team, you know. And uh, so I was kind of cool and got over that the first day and kind of settled in and just tried to get to business as usual. Um, the first week I was actually stayed at my parents' house, slept in the same bed I grew up sleeping in. So <laughs> nice. It was kind of funny. Instead of you know waking up and going to school and then going to the rink, I was just waking up and going to the rink. So um, it was kind of it's kind of a unique opportunity. And then um, my, my wife and son um, were able to get out. Uh, we just got an apartment, literally ten minutes from the house I grew up in, and um, finished out the year. So it was. It's very cool. Um, it's something that uh, I'm proud to be the first uh, native of the Milwaukee area to play for the Admirals. But uh, at the same time, I'm just kind of doing my thing and um, not going to put any added pressure on me. But obviously, I do want to be, you know, an ambassador for for not only the youth program there, but but the uh, Admirals organization as a whole. Definitely. And at the same time, continuing to uh, your domination in the AHL and hopefully that gets up to uh, gets you up into the NHL with the Predators for sure. Yeah, that's obviously that's always the goal. Um, any uh, any guy in the AHL obviously wants to to be playing in the NHL full time. And, um, you know, I think I'm in a good spot that, you know, um, I think I'll have have an opportunity with the organization and um ultimately it's one of those things as uh, as i've turned kind of from the young guy in the league into a little bit more of a veteran now um going through ups and downs the more i've realized you can only control so much so um you know at this point i'm just kind of concentrating on having a good summer getting a good summer training in and then uh coming into camp just raring to go and ready to have a good year um as long as i i do that uh you know i can't i can't control what happens uh up top when it comes to injuries or or guys performing well or not well so um i can only control how i play so i'm going to do everything i can to uh you know come in and have another good year definitely well we uh we miss you out in San Jose. We appreciate the years, uh, memories with the Sharks and Barracuda. Um, and, and I know the fan base appreciate everything you put in over the years, whether you were in teal, black, or <laughs> orange. <laughs> or in a life, yeah. lifeguard jersey. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't actually have to wear those. I got traded before them, but it was a couple oh, weeks after I got traded and I saw the jerseys and I, I gave them a little crap to the guys that were still on the team. Like, you, how'd you guys like wearing those ones? But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no, I uh, I definitely in, enjoyed all my time in San Jose and in Worcester, and um, it's it's awesome to play for such a passionate fan base, and um, you know, just not only passionate but just very kind. And um, you hear just having friends around um, hockey, you know, they're you can hear horror stories and uh you know i think that it's just one of those fan bases in, in an area of the country that you know it's just good people and um you know as, as a player that's you know those are the best types of people to have you have cheer you on you know and uh it does make you go out and perform a little bit better because you know how passionate uh, 
Sharks and Barracuda fans are about their hockey team. So, um, yeah, definitely times that uh, I'll never forget and uh, we'll never take for granted. Well, uh, thanks so much for joining us today, Troy. I know it took a, a little bit of a uh, technology wonder to make this happen, but we appreciate you coming on with us. You can find Tro- uh, Troy on Twitter at tgross1. And is there uh, anything else you, you need to, you'd like to promote or anything? Any other social media? Ch- are you on the Instagram too? Or yeah, I'm on Instagram. I don't really use it too much. Twitter's kind of my thing. Um, uh, Instagram just kind of for my wife to take, take me in pictures of our kid. I feel like so. Um, yeah, I don't really use Instagram a lot. I'm a big Twitter guy. Um, nothing else to promote. Just want to say thanks, uh, thanks guys, and hopefully uh, we get the uh, MB awareness out there. <laughs> awesome! <laughs> thanks for coming out, man. Uh, thanks, guys. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs>